Safety is the most important thing to consider when going out to sea kayak fishing. The sea is a powerful beast and must be respected and even feared. Apart from having safety equipment on board, the weather and sea conditions plays a huge part in deciding when to venture out in the first place. Choosing the right conditions is very important to me, both for my safety and for my enjoyment. Playing in a kayak at sea is different than trying to focus on fishing from a kayak and in comfort. I received some requests to make a video on how I plan for a trip. And although I stress the following is very local to where I fish, some of you may find parts useful for the locations you fish. There is no substitute for knowing your mark and how certain weather conditions affect that mark. Forecasts may look good on paper, but in fact it doesn't take much of a wind, if in the wrong direction, for that mark to kick up a sea, making it uncomfortable for kayak fishing. The mark I am planning to fish is south facing and exposed. My favoured wind direction is offshore, either northeasterly, northerly or northwesterly. Westerly is okay because there is some shelter from a headland. Offshore winds flatten the sea within the maximum distance I am likely to venture out. However, only up to a certain strength, which for me is wind and gust forecast no more than 15 miles per hour. Any stronger makes paddling back into the wind hard work, particularly if paddling into, the, into wind and tide. Onshore winds are okay, but only if very light. And I do not like to fish this mark with onshore wind and gusts more than 10 miles per hour. More kicks up the sea too much for me to be comfortable fishing, particularly if combined with a spring tide. I speak from experience at this mark, having once had to cut a trip short when the winds turned onshore to about 50 miles per hour and within 15 minutes, it changed from flat to white water and a difficult landing on the beach. An important part of kayak fishing at sea is to stick within your comfort zone. At the end of the day, you want to enjoy the trip. I love the sea, but I also fear it and therefore stick to my comfort zone and do not worry what others may be prepared to go out in. And I only go out in calm to moderate conditions. Although always aware of any changes in sea conditions, I want to focus on my fishing. My comfort zone for this exposed mark is wind and gusts no more than 15 miles per hour, depending on wind direction, and a low swell forecast. In sheltered waters, such as estuaries, the wind can be stronger, but again, only up to a maximum. The forecasts I use are XC weather, Big Salty, the BBC weather, Magic Seaweed, and the Met Office inshore waters forecast. What I'm trying to get from these various forecasts is the wind direction, the wind speed, the gust speed, the wave heights or swell forecast, and the swell direction. The swell direction is important because it is not always the same as the wind direction. And finally, the general weather conditions. Rather than put all my trust in one forecast, I like to look at several forecasts. I start looking at a few days before, but look at them closely the day before the trip, and most importantly, on the morning of the trip. Knowing your tides is also important. Apart from the fact that some tides fish better than others, paddling into a tide is far harder than paddling with the tide. Therefore, the distance you may have to paddle into a tide and possibly wind is something to, to consider. At this mark, the tide strength 
is up to about two knots, depending on the tide. And a reef I sometimes fish usually means a paddle back to base of about a mile into the tide and possibly wind. Although hard work, I know I can cope with this, but the distance you can paddle into a tide and possibly wind before tiring is definitely something to be aware of. And once again, better to stick within your comfort zone and what you can cope with. When I started looking at the forecast 24 hours before the morning of the trip, everything looked fine. This is the day of the trip. I've got my offshore wings, winds swinging no worse than westerly. I've got a wind speed and wind direction I was happy with, not wanting winds in this direction more than 15 miles per hour. The weather looked great. Again, a swell forecast that I was happy with and a swell direction that I was happy with. And basically the forecasts were more or less giving the same picture. So at this stage it looked like it would definitely be on, but from my experience, way too early to decide and I would look again in the evening. Looking at the forecast 12 hours before the trip, the night before, it's looking even better. I've got the wind in the direction I want, swinging around to no more than westerly, very, very light winds. And again on this forecast, more or less the same direction, a good wave height that I would be happy with. Likewise, the BBC, same wind direction, very, very light winds and great weather. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit interesting. This is the swell forecast getting a little bit bigger but dropping off. But, but the swell forecast is actually forecasting to come a little bit onshore. Now this forecast is where it starts to get a little bit worrying for me. And the reason for that is because of this, what it's saying here. It's saying west, which is fine, but it's saying south southwest, and then swinging around becoming cyclonic. And then, particularly the following 24 hours, where it says it's becoming southwest, three or four, three would be okay. And if remember I said, if it's an onshore wind, I'm happy to go out if it's only up to about 10 miles per hour. So force three would be okay, but force three, four or possibly five at times could be a, could be a bit of a problem so although i was still thinking the trip would be on i was slightly concerned of this swinging round to more of an onshore direction depending on the strength so as with most of my trips this is pretty typical on most of my trips i don't make a final decision unt until the morning looking at the forecast in the morning where I make a decision where I'm, whether I'm actually going to go to the mark, to the launch site or not. But then usually, unless I get other indications, the absolute final decision is when I get to the mark and then actually see what, see what the sea looks like. So the next stage would be to get up in the morning as if I was going to, going to go, but have a look at the updated six o'clock in the morning forecast just to make a final decision. On the morning of the trip, I went through exactly the same procedure, looking at the different forecasts. And basically most of them were saying that the same as the night before. Offshore and maybe swinging round to no more than westerly light winds and, a, and a, an acceptable swell forecast. One of the, fore the forecasts was given this swell as onshore and one of the forecasts, the BBC was saying uh, slightly onshore, but the wind, giving winds, very, very light and acceptable. But then I came to this forecast from the Met Office, and this is the one that gave me a little bit of concern the night before. And it also gave me concern again. And this is the updated six o'clock in the morning forecast. So very up to date. 
and the wind here giving it cyclonic 4 or 5, becoming variable, but mainly south or southwest 3 or 4. Now, as I've said, I don't mind very light onshore winds at this mark, south or southwest or southeast, but when they get over 10 miles per hour and combined with a bit of a swell, for me, it, it can get a little bit uncomfortable for fish, and I just can't can't really do what I want to do in comfort. So that I, I'm was concerned. So I decided to go outside and get a feel for myself of of what it looked like and what it felt like. Now I'm very uh, lucky that I only live a half a mile from the south coast of Cornwall. And I stepped out on my front door and looked at this tree which sits quite high and saw that there was quite a breeze hitting it and hitting it in a direction that I didn't want. It was hitting it from the southwest and it was quite a breeze and, and a few little gusts there. Now going back to knowing your mark, I know for a fact that at this mark, looking at that wind, that that would be just too uncomfortable for me to fish. So on this occasion I decided to abandon this trip. But the good news is a few days later I had the opportunity to go again and we'll have a look at what happened. Incidentally on this day I ended up going fishing off of a harbour wall on the south coast, coast of Cornwall and realised that I'd made absolutely the right decision. There was a fair breeze and onshore breeze southerly southwesterly and definitely would have been not the time for me to fish this mark. So I was very very pleased that I saw for myself that all of the research and all of the, all of the work was worth it because I, on this occasion I made the right decision. As said, a few days later I had the opportunity to go again and this time it was a really positive result. The forecast the night before was different, slightly different, it was starting offshore but then swinging onshore in a southwesterly direction. But although it was onshore it was within the, the threshold that I needed, very very light winds and everything was looking positive, all the forecasts were looking the same. So just as usual, just a matter of the final checks in the morning and hopefully we, we would be away and out fishing. So I was up at the crack of dawn and all the forecast looked brilliant with very very light onshores forecast and low swells, no problems at all. My tree was absolutely motionless, not a sign of any breeze. And as I looked across to the area that I was going to fish, what a fantastic morning to be heading off fishing. And I couldn't wait to get out there. Right, we're off. And let's hope now that all that effort made, planning and, and patiently waiting for an opportunity that coincided with my availability produces some fish today. So it's going to be interesting to see, having looked at the forecast, how this weather, weather, weather develops today. And at the moment, as I'm paddling out, we've got a, a light offshore. But what I'm expecting to, ha expecting to happen, if the forecast is correct, is this, that this light breeze is going to swing round from to the from the southwest south or southwest to be a, a light onshore um, but it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens
Well, so far for the first half of this session, it's been absolutely flat calm. But I don't know if the camera will pick it up. You can just see beyond this little flat calm patch here, you can just see the ripple starting to form. And that's the, as the forecast said, the breeze has started, started to swing to onshore uh, in a southerly or southwesterly direction. So, so far the forecast is absolutely right. And if we can, if it stays right, then what should happen? It will stay onshore like this, but just pick up a little bit, but ne never going to be um, very strong at all. So pretty accurate so far. Well, that's it. I've got to head on in now. I've had a few fish today and it's been a great day. And as far as the forecast, they got it absolutely spot on today. That doesn't always happen, of course, and you've always got to be mindful of changes you don't, you don't expect. And if it does kick up rough unexpectedly, then what I always do, and I get uncomfortable, is just cut the, sh cut the trip short and, and head on in. The sa safety is the most important thing. But on this occasion, it was absolutely fine. As forecast, as you can probably see, picked up a little bit. They forecast it would go south or southwesterly, which it has done. It's southerly at the moment, just picking up a little bit, which it has done, but it's absolutely fine. If I wanted to, I could stay out here for a good few, few more hours, but, but got to get on in. So for those of you that are fairly new to kayak fishing, the advice I can give you is, yes, check all your different forecasts and try and get an as accurate picture as you can but also to stick within your comfort zone. And that's what I do. When I go out fishing, I, I, I want to be focusing on the fishing and not what the weather, weather's doing. And therefore, I always only go out in relatively calm conditions. I don't, I don't mind a bit of a chop, a bit of a swell, but I never go out when, when, I, when I'm in weather that I don't feel comfortable. But most importantly, there's nothing like local knowledge and knowing your mark and knowing how certain weather conditions and wind directions can affect that mark and sometimes if a wind's in a certain direction it doesn't have to be that strong to to make it make it rough particularly if it's combined with with maybe a spring tide so knowing your mark is 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 an is an absolute asset so once again i hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching